I call this meeting to order for the North Adams City Council for Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Will the clerk please take the roll? Barbo? Here. Blackmare? Here. Bona? Here. Harpin? Obasahan? Oleskowit? Here. Sapienza? Here. Shade? Here. Wilkinson? Here. Seven present, we have a quorum. Please rise for a moment of silent remembrance. Please remember um, Betty DeLego, who was an election worker. And also, I know that Mr. Trottier was not a city employee, but I know that for years we relied on him for his weather reports. And the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the, flag the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Do we have a motion on the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, call the hearing of visitors on agenda items. This is an opportunity for the public to speak to the council for two minutes regarding items listed on our agenda. Please give your name and address for the record. Just to confirm the taxi ordinance is still on the agenda? Yes, okay. Um, first of all, my name's Virginia Real. I live at 36 Holdman Street. I wanna commend, uh, <laughs> commend the work that's been done on this. I think it's very hard to write plain language legislation and I think that this has achieved that. And my comments are really to just suggest some areas where maybe there is the potential for misunderstanding downstream, which is what the intent was to correct. So my first point would be to consider whether the current holders of licenses, how does this impact them? Is there a, a, a period of time they have to come into any compliance issues, go through any inspections that are now required, things like that. Um, I think that, um, the um, statement about who can drive the vehicle, I just want, want to make sure it's the intent of the council to say mundane tasks like going to the car wash would still require a licensed driver. I think you've covered the mechanic issue, which council member Shade uh, brought up. Um, and then another area of clarification is there's the statement that the police chief approved something and the city council approved something, and I wonder if that might not be more clear to say that the um, police chief makes a recommendation and the council approves. Otherwise, you've got two approvals in there and that could be confusing. Um, in the appeals process, if someone is suspended and they're appealing it, does the suspended get um, uh, it's a suspension pended then during the appeal process. And then the inspection of vehicles. Um, I'm sure we, the police chief or whoever his designee is, would do the best job they could, but I just question whether there might be a more consistent, effective, and less arbitrary process for determining if a vehicle is safe. And I guess I wondered why the processes that the state has in place would not be sufficient. And so that confused me and it seemed more scientific and consistent and reliable. Um, and I think maybe at the end, yes. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just, you know, I think again, as, as I said, it's tightening it up. I think a lot of good work was done, just making sure it's clear and downstream we don't end up with a lot of confusion. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 
wish to address the council on agenda items. Okay, moving on, a public hearing, a petition from National Grid to set a public hearing for the installation of a new pole and replacement of another pole on Montana Street. We do have the paperwork from National Grid, and although their representative doesn't seem to be here yet, um, we do have the paperwork, so um, are there any comments from the public regarding this poll? <clears throat> any questions, comments from the council? A motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. We'll move on to that paper later. Um, council paper 12,000. 312, oh, sorry, move to the next page. Um, considering we have some people here to speak regarding um, some agenda items, I would like to move council paper without objection, 12,315, an order submitted by Mayor Maxey requesting approval from the City Council to execute a, mem a memorandum of understanding for Title IV ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, without objection, uh, Mayor, could you read the order? Sure. Um, as described in my communication, this is a formality, and this agreement is made in relation to the administration of transportation costs by establishing the terms and conditions they relate to for reporting costs and receiving Title IV allowable federal reimbursement for transporting students that are eligible um, for foster care to and from their um, foster placement in North Adams. So we have been asked um, by the department um, as a procedure of the grant recipient agreement um, to bring this before the legislative body for approval. Mr. Simon, uh, the director of special ed is available today for any specific questions, um, but this is just more of a boilerplate grant um, request as we've seen in some other grants um, earlier in the year. Thank you. Why don't we um, move on to the order. Um, the order, you all have it, it's lengthy. It's eight pages, I don't think we need to move it. Uh, we need to read the entire thing into the record, but um, this does not need to be published, correct? No, okay, so an order submitted by Mayor Maxey requesting approval from City Council to execute an MOU for Title IV, Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, Mr. Simon, do you want to come in and give a quick, quick kind of explanation about what this is, and then if the Council has any questions, they can ask? Sure. Uh, the, the short version, my name is uh, Tom Simon, Director of Student Support Services for the North Adams Public Schools. Uh, the, the MOU is an agreement between the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, the Department of Education, Elementary and Secondary Education, and the Department of Children and Families in the city to allow for um, the reimbursement of costs associated with transporting students from their foster placements, wherever they may be, um, into their school of origin in um, North Adams. Can you speak up? Oh, thank you. Oh, they can't. Yeah, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it, historically, uh, we have anywhere between twenty to fifty thousand dollars worth of costs associated with the, um, this this type of transportation. We, with this process in place, this would allow us to recover approximately, <coughs> t roughly twenty percent of those costs on an annual basis. Any questions, Councilor Shade? Yes, um, through the chair. Um, if a student who is a student at a North Adams school ends up in foster care in, say, Adams, would that allow them to continue to go to the same school or would they have to switch schools? Yes, no, the law allows for students who are in foster care um, within about an hour's worth of travel time to remain in their school of origin if it's determined to be in the student's best interest. And every effort is made to try to keep kids in their school of origin whenever that's possible. Okay, and so these funds would also allow for that transportation for those students? Depending on, on the type of transportation that we utilize, um, it may. We, it, in some cases, we may already have a bus going there, so it wouldn't be an additional cost. Okay. Um, in other circumstances, for example, um, if they're placed in Pittsfield, we may need to make, for, make arrangements for a specialized um, a van or uh, utilize a, a separate bus in order yeah. to be able to make that transportation. And sometimes we also do parent reimbursement. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> uh, 
Um, so motion and a second. Is this roll call or home favor? <coughs> I think it's just an order. I, I think, think we're good. Regular, huh? Yeah, we're good. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Did we have a motion? I don't think we made a motion. We oh. never had a motion. I thought when I brought it up. I'm sorry. Do we have a motion to adopt the order, please? Motion to adopt. Second. Councilor Olesko, it's Councilor Sapienza. All in favor again? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Simon. <laughs> Um, Council paper 12,316, Mayor's communication number 92 regarding presenting a resolution to grant permission to apply. Point of order? I'm sorry. Are we continuing? Oh, I'm sorry. Business, Without we... objection, I'd like to move this other grant up so that the chief can leave. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for Without objection, everybody's okay with that? Uh, you haven't been in my head for the last 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> Who has? <laughs> <laughs> Council paper 12,316, Mayor's Communication 92, regarding presenting a resolution to grant permission to apply fiscal year 2023 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant to purchase traffic safety equipment. Without objection, I'll file the communication, Mayor. Um, the communication basically speaks to itself. Again, this is a resolution uh, granting me permission to apply for 11678 um, for the North Adams Police Department to purchase uh, tra traffic safety equipment and an enclosed cargo trailer to assist us in directing traffic and implementing traffic safety measures. Um, this is a, a grant that um, we've received in the past. We've already submitted it, um, but part of the application process is to have a resolution on file, which I'm asking for all your approval in. <clears throat> Councilor Shade? Yes, uh, this is more of a point of order, but on the agenda that we received, both um, 12315 and 12316 are both titled Mayor's Communication 91. It should be 92. So that's that's an error. So 316 is 92. Okay, just wanted to clarify for the record on the agenda. On... You, you change it on my papers, but yeah. I don't. Think, I don't know if they all have that. And it does. It does say it correctly in the packet of, but okay. it's it's just on the agenda itself. It's mislabeled. Okay. So for clarification for anybody looking at the agenda <clears throat> at home. And Chief Bailey is here to answer any questions that anyone may have. Great. And so we're going to move it on to the order then. Council Paper 12,316 and orders a resolution to grant permission to apply for fiscal year 2023 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant in the amount of $11,678 for the police department for the purchase of traffic safety equipment. A motion to adopt. Motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Okay. Third. Any more discussion or Chief Bailey, would you like to come up and give us some more information? Yeah, so th this grant is just is allocated through the uh, Edward Byrne Memorial JAG grant um, for $11,678. We can use this um, for supplies, equipment, training personnel. Um, we decided to get more supplies with this grant because we're, uh, we really need a new trailer or a trailer um, to help cart some of the traffic safety equipment around. Um, some things that come to mind are the winter storm and the rainstorm that we just had. We're bringing out these traffic cones and all of our barriers with our own personal trucks, um, mainly because they don't fit in any of the cruisers. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, when we get them out there, we don't know where we actually <laughs> put them if people move them around. Um, so they're lost uh, if they're getting plowed over. They're lost if, if people take them. So this, is, this equipment is really going to not only help us in the future maintain our equipment, but it's, it's going to help us so we don't have to use our own personal uh, vehicles to get out. Any questions? Councilor Bona. Yeah, um, the chair. Uh, I noticed there, there is another trailer parked at the police department. Is that for something different? That's the trailer. Um, at the... The old police department, the new police. Which Is there one behind the new police department? That's trailer? um, that's a generator, uh, a backup <laughs> generator. Yeah, sorry. That's, oh wow. Yeah. Oh no. Well, oh, it's pretty um, big. Yeah, so it, it is. Like it looks trailer. like a, it is a trailer, but it's a generator in case we lose power until we get a uh, a fixed um, generator. But it's there. specific for the building. Yeah, it's not for the building. It's just in case we lose power there, we gotcha. can. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Anyone else? 
This is a roll call vote. I'm sorry, this one's not. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Council paper 6150 2, an ordinance to amend Chapter 2, Article 19, Airport Commission Section 2 108, entitled Establishment Composition Qualifications of the Revised Ordinances to Mirror. MGL Part 1, Title 19, Chapter 90, Section 51E, passed to a second reading, published as required by law at the September 12th, 2023 meeting, and postponed from the meeting of September 26th. Um, Move to approve. A, a motion to adopt would be in order. Oh, we'll do that. Motion to adopt. Second. Councilor Wilkinson, Councilor Shade. Um, are there any more conversations, discussion on this one? so we can finally put something to bed. This is a roll call vote. Yes. Barbo? Yes. Bona? Yes. Aleskowitz? Yes. Sapienza? Yes. Shade? Yes. Wilkinson? <coughs> yes. Blackmere? Yes. Seven yeas, motion carries. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for all involved in getting that through the process. Council Paper 9513-31, an ordinance to amend Chapter 7, Section 7-11 of the revised ordinances of the City of North Adams regarding the change of permit price passed to a second reading and published as required by law at the meeting of September 12, 2023, postponed from the meeting of September 26, 2023, a motion to adopt would be Motion to adopt. Second. <coughs> Councilor Leskowitz, Councilor Sapienza. Any more discussion on this? This is a roll call vote. Barbo? Yes. Bona? Yes. Aleskowitz? Yes. Sapienza? Yes. Shade? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Blackmere? <clears throat> yes. Seven yeas, motion carries. Uh, Council Paper 11,790-3, an ordinance amending Chapter 3, Building Code Section 3-50.3, taxes, fees, and permits to establish registration and inspection fees for short-term rental, passed to a second reading and published as required by law at the meeting of September 26, 2023. Motion to adopt. Okay, <coughs> apparently we need to postpone this to the next meeting. <coughs> Um, between the, I know that we've had some IT issues and getting these notices uploaded to the to the Eagle site has been an ongoing issue, and also I think running into holidays has also thrown it off. Holiday, um, Councillor Shade. If we're having difficulties communicating with the most local paper, then isn't there a way we can appeal to the state to not have to do that anymore? Because we're wasting money doing it and it's not even getting to most people in North Adams. It would be more beneficial to post on I Berkshires, which more North Adams people read than the Berkshire Eagle. Let's be honest, it would get to more people, it would satisfy the agreement, and it would actually benefit the local community. So I feel like while I was publishing it somewhere I, where our constituents don't even read it and we're paying money for that and it's I, being delayed is a big problem okay i would agree with that i think there's i know different communities do it different ways and i think it's an issue that general government should be looking into to rewrite the ordinance part of it but so we had a motion to adopt so we need to rescind the order Rescind my motion okay a motion to postpone would be in order motion to postpone to the next meeting second Councillor Leskowitz, Councillor Shade. Yeah. Discussion, Mayor, you have something to add, and I know Councillor um, Wilkinson has something to say. Yeah. This, we've brought this subject up numerous times over the years, and I believe, if memory serves me correctly, I'm sure somebody will straighten me out if I'm wrong, it has to do with the city charter, and the verb word, in the, uh, the, the verbiage in the city charter is a written, published newspaper or, or news. Objective. Unfortunately, I Berkshire's, which would probably be, be uh, would be beneficial for us, is not printed, and the word printed is in the charter. 
Now, you can send this to the general government, but the general government cannot work around the charter. But the point of, point of order, point this of is it. not the, I mean, the discussion well, of Well, that was going to be what I was going to say. I'm going to say. That is, it, it is a discussion of its own that we've had and we should have, we should continue, but that is not what this particular agenda item is. That was my point. I was going to say that's a conversation if somebody Just wants to. Trying to make an explanation. Okay. <clears throat> Mayor, you have something to add. I just wanted to add that Mr. Moranti is here. I know at the last meeting there was some questions around inspection fee and how long it takes him to do an inspection. He did come out tonight anticipating those types of questions. Um, I don't know if you want to entertain that discussion tonight or not. That's fine. Um, or maybe no one has any questions around that. I know you did respond with some information to <coughs> us. Did. so. Um, does anyone have any questions pertaining to that? I know they w were several points of discussion that they want to ask Mr. Moranti. I believe all questions were answered. It was passed to a second reading. It was passed to a second reading, but in the meantime, we were also looking for answers. I know the mayor got back to us with, I think, some spreadsheets. and <clears throat> Councilor Shade, then Councilor Wilkinson. This yes. Through that chair to uh, Mr. Moranti, uh, we had discussed in the last meeting when we had talked about this issue, um, you know, what the costs were for inspection services, and the mayor did give us some reasonable numbers that, that made sense. Um, is there, well, it, it wouldn't be a part of this particular ordinance, um, the fees that were mentioned um, severely were, were severely more than what we're charging for long-term inspections. Um, basically, we're losing money on those services. Uh, do, you f do you believe that the numbers <coughs> presented would cover the cost of an inspection for a short-term rental, or would we be losing money like we, like we are based on those numbers for uh, long-term rentals? Well, quite frankly, I was happy with the decision that the general government committee made on the fee schedule. I don't think that it was unfair, the amount that was set there. What we're looking to do is cover our costs. I mean, we lose at every inspection that we do, pretty much across the board, the city does not even break even. And it's the same with the boards and all the fees out there, actually. It costs us more to advertise than it does, you know, it doesn't even cover our advertisement fee for planning board, zoning board, other things. So we're just trying to start with a break-even price, that's all. We're not looking to make money. We're just looking to break even. Thank you. C Councilor Wilkinson. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Moranti. With this postponement, how many meetings will we've had on short-term rentals? I think that'll be number 30. 30? Yep. Oh, well, I know you're keeping track. Yep. Thank you. Councilor Barbo. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on um, Councilor Shade's point, I believe that that question, the mayor was kind enough to send us the breakdown through Mr. Moranti. But just to clarify, when I followed back up with her, she did share with me to kind of go back just to a little bit of discussion that it's the exact same cost to inspect a long-term rental th as it is to inspect a short-term rental. So we're basically losing $200 on every long-term rental inspection. Is that correct? I mean, potentially. I mean, some inspections go extremely well, and you walk through, and in a short order, you're done. Other inspections involve much more than that, and many more visits, and more paperwork, and more follow-up. It's it's hard to put a number on, you know, what what's the average, because w they can be extreme. One can be, you know, uh, landlords in the room here could testify 10 minutes on a great apartment and you're done the paperwork is done on others it's quite frankly babysitting back again and again and again trying to get compliance so that you can issue those certificates our follow-up fees our, our re-inspection fees are less than our initial fee which makes no sense because we have to do exactly the same thing and we lose money any others so we have a motion and a second to postpone all in favor aye, aye. aye. no opposed no 
You are in opposed? I am. Okay, so five, one, two, three, four, five yeas, two nays, motion carries. Council paper 12,218. <clears throat> ordinance to amending chapter 23 taxi ordinance as voted by the Public Safety Committee to refer to council postponed from the meeting of September 26th with a return date of October 10th. The motion would be to pass to a second reading and publish as a municipal bulletin. Okay, um, yes. I'd Can like we have that motion first? Yes, I'll make the motion to pass to a second reading and publish as required by law as a public bulletin. Thank you, municipal bulletin. Do we have a second? Second. <coughs> Um, would you like to give us an update, well, <laughs> Councillor Sapienza? Okay. All right, we've been working on this since March, and I want to uh, thank the members of the uh, Public Safety Committee and the um, our police chief and lieutenants and the mayor for helping us put this together. It's uh, well, we've been working on this since March, so I'm going to highlight the major changes on this. And uh, basically, what we did is we clarified the definitions of taxi business operator, taxi vehicle, and taxi driver's license. There was language in the ordinance <coughs> that referred to as licenses, operator's licenses, and we removed that language to, or changed the language to say taxi business operator and taxi driver's license. Um, one of the other major changes requires taxi business operators to be licensed taxi drivers. Provisions have been added in the uh, ordinance for maintenance, repair, and transportation of out-of-service taxi vehicles. Prohibits the use of tobacco products within a taxi vehicle. Clarifies and specifies the penalties for both operators and drivers. Clarifies the application of penalties for both operators and drivers. Uh, provides for an appeals process for both operators and drivers through the City Council. Clarifies the requirements for both operators and driver's license. Requires taxi business operators to have City Council approval when moving their business location. Requires taxi business operators to supply sufficient off-street parking for their taxi fleet. Requires taxi business operators to register each taxi vehicle in their fleet as an attachment to their operator's license. This also eliminates the transfer or sale of a taxi business operator's license. So in other words, they just can't give it to somebody else. It has to go through city council approval uh, and any transfer. And it also eliminates the provision for ta temporary taxi driver's licenses. Um, and a couple of little things here. Uh, there were changes in language to specify instead of public safety department. It now says police department and director of public safety is now the chief of police or their designated alternate. And any gender-specific gender language has been removed throughout this ordinance. And that's it. Councilor Shade. Yes. Um, <coughs> first... Great work on updating this. Thank you. Um, as was pointed out a little earlier from a member of the public, there's a few things that are still missing that until that's fixed, I don't believe we can or should pass this. Um, the first is that it talks about violations, but it doesn't talk about what kind of violations. Are we talking about motor vehicle violations? Does that include pe drivers who have a taxi license um, getting a speeding ticket in their personal vehicles or only while operating a taxi? I think those things need to be specified and clarified a little bit more because the drivers need to know exactly how that's going to affect them <clears throat> if, if a motor vehicle operation violation, if it's any at all, if they're driving period, or if it's violations while they're driving a taxi. Um, the second thing that needs to be clarified is through the appeal process, when they file an appeal, does that automatically postpone their suspension or it, does a suspension get put on hold until their appeal has been heard, or does the suspension stay in effect? I think we need to clarify those two things. I think we could do that here tonight and amend this and add that language in. I don't think we'd have to send it back to committee to do that. Um, I think just adding a few words can clarify those, but I think those are really important things to clarify before we pass this through, because they're going to affect how people work. 
And we need people who get these licenses to know what the consequences are of, of what might happen. Um, other than that, I, I think that everything else is covered, and I think that this does a great job of simplifying the, the taxi ordinance, making it easier to understand for the public, making it easier to understand for the business owners and operators. And I would say great work to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilor Shea, can you make a, do you have a recommendation for the amendments? Yeah. Um, in a place you'd like to put them where you could, because, you know, it's eight pages. Yes. So, um, I so guess we'll go if one. If you could move to, ama to amend and yeah. then make those. Yeah. So, first, I, I would move to amend um, section 23-3, 1 and 2. Both say any, um, well, the first section 2331 says any taxi cab business operator who has incurred three or more violations within a 30 day period. Um, I think we need to specify the type of violations. So I would say moving violations. That way we know it's any kind of traffic or moving or traffic violation. <coughs> so the okay. proposed amendment would be to add the language moving or traffic violation. But a violation would be smoking in the in the taxi cab too. So that's a viol so it would be violations of mass general law or this taxi ordinance. Or this ordinance. ordinance. Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to yeah. come in here, but I want to make sure we count those other things in, the things that they worked really hard to put in. Okay. So, so. I would make the, the amendment to say moving violations, traffic violations, or violations of the, of the ordinance to, to clarify. So that way it would cover all of them. Okay. Moving violations or what? Traffic? Traffic. Traffic, traffic and violation. moving, aren't they the same thing? I believe so. Yeah. Did the, chief, the chief left. <clears throat> the chief did leave. Okay. Councilor Sessions. Through the chair to uh, Councilor Shade. Okay, in that first section, 23-1, um, uh, I lost my place there, 23-3.1, yes. um, on that particular section, when it says three or more violations, <coughs> I think that should be specifically for ordinance only, okay. because that's the operation of the business. Okay. It's not, it doesn't have to deal with the operation of the actual cab. It's for, so if we say something to the effect of um, three or more ordinance, ordinance violations. I would just say of this, more violations of this ordinance. Of this ordinance, okay. That would be my recommendation. All right. I would agree with that. Okay, and on section 23-3.2, penalty for track C drivers, uh, three or more violations of this ordinance. And um, traffic violations. <clears throat> yeah, I believe it should say or traffic violations. Yes. Yeah. So that it covers the ordinance and it covers traffic yeah, violations. Yeah, or traffic well. violations, yes. Okay. And what was the other one? The other one is the appeals process. At the end of both appeals sections, uh, 2335 and 2336, um, I would propose that the, a sentence be added that says uh, any suspension shall um, be put on hold until the appeal is heard. Okay. Um, through the chair to the... Uh, the chair to uh, Councillor Shade. I think on that respect, um, I think that the, this is personal opinion, I think that maybe the uh, suspension or revocation should occur immediately so that if the tracks, if the driver is or if the operator is offending that they they have this, this is applied immediately. I don't know, I'm throwing this out there, so I'm looking for any, any feedback on this at this point. Councilor Bona. Yeah, no, I understand where Councilor Sapiens is coming from, um, because if it is a serious enough offense where, um, you know, the council, the city feels we need to respond quickly, um, depends on how fast we can get the appeals process. So 
it, it would sort of, I guess, force us to have to get that appeals process, but I don't know if there's a certain time limit you have to allow for that. And so, again, if it's a, a situation you don't want a driver or the taxi business to continue, um, I get we're also Councilor Shade because it's sort of like you're, you're automatically saying they're guilty without allowing them to respond. Uh, so I don't know. There should there is a gray area there. I don't know if there's the option. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the in between would be right now. Right now it reads that we there is no. Like it could happen immediately, right? Right now, as it reads, it could happen immediately. Right. So yes. typically, if we're going to appeal or if we're going to suspend, it's going to happen at a public meeting. So the the business would have the opportunity to be at that meeting and speak on their behalf. So I feel like they have the opportunity to appeal at that time, just as we've seen it in the past couple of meetings. Actually, that's not what it reads. No. It says at the discretion of the chief or their designated alternate, the driver may suffer suspension or revocation of their taxi driver's license. Okay. So it wouldn't be us revoking the license, it would be the chief? Um, again, I feel if the chief is, is revoking that license, it's got to be serious enough, not just, you know, parking more than 15 minutes. It's probably a situation they feel it's definitely unsafe to drive, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Councilor Shade. So, yeah, I think we are talking about two different sections, and I do think it's probably going to be different for the operator and the business side where you are correct. We would hear that in a public forum ahead of time. With the suspension of the license, I would say that unless their actual driving license is being suspended, then I'd want them to have the right to appeal before we actually took away their, their ability to work. Um, if their driver's license is suspended, then obviously they can't operate a motor vehicle, and that, that's, that's totally separate. That's already a law that's already on the books. But if we're talking, um, you know, for, for smaller infractions or infractions of the ordinance, I do feel like if, if that is not a public hearing where, where people can comment, where people can say something, where somebody can really defend themselves, I do believe in that case when you're talking about an operator <coughs> and a person and a driver's ability to do their job, I do think that if they file the appeal in time, then the suspension should be on hold until the hearing is done, and then it would go into effect based on the results of the hearing. Okay. There wasn't a, let me uh, just review this real quick again. Um, I do believe that I put in this clause that allows the driver to have multiple suspensions before the uh, or multiple infractions before the suspension would actually in re occur and under uh, section 23-3.1 penalties for taxi cab business operators um, a taxi cab business operator has incurred three or more violations within the 30 day uh, Violations of this ordinance within the 30 day period may suffer suspension of their operator's license. And then chronic violations more than 12 violations in 12 months may result in revocation of the operator's license. And of course, then it requires the decision of the council to whether uphold or, uh, or pass judgment on the uh, particular uh, situation. And the same thing under penalties for taxi drivers, 23-3.2. Um, it allows uh, three or more violations of this ordinance or traffic violations within a six month period may suffer suspension of their taxi driver's license. And then it goes on if there's more than six violations within a year, and then revocation is recommended. I don't know if that clear, clarifies anything. Councilor Shade? Yes, through the chair to Councilor Sapienza. It does help, yes. Okay. But under the way 2334 is written, the application of penalty against the licensed driver, it says that any violation is a discretionary of the, of the chief of police. So if they violate one time, the chief of police is going to have the discretion. It doesn't say there's, there's no minimum, there's no number there. 
It doesn't refer back to the previous number. It doesn't refer back to that. It gives that open discretion directly to the police, directly to the chief, of whether or not to suspend a license. So that's why I think there should be an appeal process, just in case it is. I'm not saying that there would be, but if we're going to leave it open-ended like that, Otherwise, we need to close the open-endedness of that and specifically stay after a certain amount of violations, then the chief of police would have the authority to revoke or suspend a license. Um, without that, with it being kind of open-ended in that section, I think it's really important that we have that appeal process in place to protect the employees who work for the cops and to give them the benefit of doubt to be able to appeal a suspension and you know, appeal the ability to not work, essentially. If their license, if their taxi <coughs> license is suspended, they can't work, they can't do their jobs, they can't pay rent, they can't put food on the table, they can't take care of their families. So if that's going to be left open-ended, then we need that appeal process. I think it's really important to protect, um, protect those drivers. Could you kind of as a compromise, I mean, because if somebody's been charged criminally, I, I, I mean, somebody's been charged criminally. I don't want them driving. And, and I understand that being charged doesn't mean guilty. But mm -hmm. I, as a city councilor, don't want to be responsible for, just say, a sex offender driving people around or, you know, an axe murder or whatever. So is there a way to put in there um, barring criminal charges or criminal or, or suspension, you know, actual suspension of license to drive um, the can uh, the applicant or the taxi driver can maintain their license until a hearing if they appeal while the hearing while their <coughs> behavior whatever is under appeal um, is there a way to do that and I do have a quick clarification question you sent this to count the solicitor to review yes did you make any changes after that there was no changes to okay. be made. Thank yep. you. I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure like he actually, or they actually reviewed this as it's being prevent, presented to us. Yep. Yes, they did. Okay. Yeah. You go ahead back again. What was, what are the thoughts? Okay. So on the, on the, of course, 23-3.4 uh, application of uh, penalty against licensed taxi driver, if the infraction is serious enough I think that the penalty should be applied immediately it, this actually says violation of ordinances it doesn't even say okay. it does say violation of ord or ordinance which also yes. includes the which, violation of criminal stuff but. yes which yeah. would include violation of criminal right. law but again if if the person is violating they they get a speeding a, a few speeding tickets um, or if it's something, a parking ticket violation, they get a few of those, um, or whatever it might be. If it's not something criminal, it's a, if it's not a safety issue, I think that that's probably where we draw the line is at safety. We want to make sure that the public is safe in any vehicle with any driver. So if it's not an issue of, of public safety, the suspension should be held until the appeal can be heard. If it's an issue of public safety, then I have no problem with saying <coughs> your license is suspended, you can appeal, but it's going to stay suspended until you have your appeal. If it's not, if it's not directly involved in, in the safety of the public, I think we should have that, that appeal. Um, once they file the appeal, that, that the suspension would be held until the appeal is heard. Okay. Bear with me for a moment. Uh, I am trying to figure out how we can uh, put this in here. Um, application of penalty against license operator. Um, okay. How about if an appeal is filed? Which section now? Okay, if you're looking at section 23-3.4. Okay. Um, as such a driver has suffered a suspension or revocation, my file an appeal under section section. I would, that's where we could put. If, if violation is non-criminal, does that sound like a g appropriate okay. word? Um, I would say if the violation is not 
direct does not directly impact public safety i think that's too vague it's too vague yeah i would say i would, say, I would go with non-criminal because that tends okay. to be language you okay. if the violation is non-criminal the suspension would be pending the appeal um would be pending until an appeal is heard yeah okay so Councillor, okay well let me uh, Councillor wilkinson do you have anything to i do don't you do i certainly applaud all the hard work that was done on this but this is the kind of stuff that's done in committee not done on the council floor obviously there's a little bit of confusion now for wording there's a little bit of confusion for what we're really trying to say and as much as I'd love to see this fall off the agenda I'm gonna to have to say that I really think that this needs to go back to committee one more time to work out everything we're all trying to work out we could be here for another hour I'm no mind staying for the hour if that's what you want to do <coughs> but this is not ready to come to a full council vote at this time in my opinion uh, well the other thing I would suggest is people who like who come to these meetings and make these suggestions it's actually really helpful if you show up when the committee work is being done because that's sometimes where they get in the weeds and they can go back and forth and Great. they're not um, they've got one or two items on their agenda not three pages um, at this point I don't know what you want to do we have a motion we started amendments we motion okay. to publish councillor sapienza what's your pleasure i think at this point uh let's uh let me rescind my original motion and i will make a motion to refer this back to public safety for these uh changes and we'll bring it back before the second the date certain which date uh let's do the first meeting in november okay thank you second we have a motion and a second any discussion on the motion <coughs> all in favor aye. aye aye opposed nay that's no shade so we have six yeas um thank you councillor sepians i do appreciate the work thank you and again if anybody has any comments questions about this particular ordinance make sure you reach out to councillor sepians and he'll let you know when the meeting is and you can um hash it out even more now yep. i gotta I will try to get a, mo a meeting uh, posted fairly quickly. Okay, yep. so are we done with that one? Yes. Council paper 12,286, an ordinance amending Chapter Z zoning section four dimensional regulation by adding section 4.16 postponed from the meeting of August 22nd due to a lack of quorum for planning board members at the joint meeting and uh, referred back to planning board at the meeting of September 12th with a return date of October 10th. It was approved for referral to the city council by the planning board vote and yes their vote was legal that time. They put it on the agenda and they voted on it. Move to adopt. Do we have a second? Second. No wait has this been published? Okay, move to publish. <clears throat> move to reject. Okay, we haven't finished the first motion. The, mo um, the motion would be to pass to a second reading and publish as required by law. It was what you were saying. That it is exactly correct. Second. Okay. Discussion. Obviously, Councillor Shade has. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure. Thank you. Um, we talked about this a while ago, and again, we are essentially adjusting um, adjusting certain pieces of this ordinance instead of creating a new zone, which is what we should be doing. I, I don't think it's <clears throat> right to exclude, to have a, a larger zone that includes downtown and surrounding areas and adjust the amendment to the surrounding areas and leave out downtown or Main Street, um, we're basically kind of cherry picking the zone itself rather than just creating a new zone. Yes, I know that that one specific space is the space that I, that this is really referring to, but you know, um, we've created new zones for streets for different areas. And I think Union Street itself should be a separate zone for, from, from the rest of Main Street that should have different regulations and different rules. 
we, we should be doing this the proper way and actually changing a zone rather than doing it this way by just giving a blanket permission to, hey, whoever this group is can decide arbitrarily that we're, we're going to go against what the will of the original ordinance was, and you can go ahead and, and change it based on whoever this board is decides, well, yeah, we'll hear it or no, we won't. So I, I think the, the, the correct and proper way to do this is through a zoning, actual zoning change and creating a new zone off of Union Street, which would include that lot and not just that lot, but the rest of Union Street as well. And I, I, I just don't like the idea of giving a board the ability to, to cherry pick what, what sections of a zone they decide we should do this for or shouldn't do this for. I don't think that was the intent of the original ordinance. I don't think that was the way it was originally written. And I don't think that's the way that we should should do this work. So I'm against it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moranti, did you want to say something? Quite frankly, I have to disagree entirely with Councillor Shade. This is exactly what the planning board does. And this is how one of the ways to change zoning to make it work. We admitted it was a mistake by the committee. All of us that did it when we changed the CBD zone and extended it as far as we did, it, it was an oversight. We're trying to fix that so that development, any development can happen outside of that zone. And this is only an option. The planning board grants special permits. That's what they do. This would be another special permit that they would have the ability to grant or not depending on the application. <coughs> so I don't see that there's anything out of the ordinary or wrong with the way we're going about this. Thank you. Councilor Bona. Um, I'm going to agree with count, uh, uh, Mr. Moranti. Um, creating a different zone with different rules, creating uh, a special section within a zone, um, at the end, it's really not changing a whole lot. We're still giving, uh, you know, it, it still comes down to a board, a zoning board, a planning board, a city council. Um, we're still making, um, you know, <coughs> specific adjustments uh, for certain reasons. And this has been done many, many times. Uh, so I think at the end, you still have the, the same thing, whatever is going to happen. If you break it into a zone or if you give the special at the end, um, if, if it's about the city feeling it's, it's better to have uh, this option for that corner, it doesn't really matter if it's a different zone. It doesn't matter if it's within one zone and we're then making that section have uh, a, a, different, a different rule. So um, I think at the end you're going to have the same results, and I'm happy with what's in front of us right now. And uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Well, I'm, I'd have to agree with Councillor Bona. Planning, planning board's there for a reason. And the city, just as they put trust most of the time, and the city council ha has to put trust in the planning board. Um, they're the one that can decide, no matter what, if, if this is approved tonight, and for some reason a development wants to go into that particular zone, doesn't meet the criteria for a special permit, planning board can easily say no. So even though we're not automatically giving a developer the right to do something there, you have to put the trust in the planning board. I spent many, many years on the planning board, knows how it functions, therefore know somewhat about zoning. And as it's written now, this can very easily work because there's a, there's a, um, <coughs> A last minute thing on here. The planning board say, well, maybe there's going to be a traffic issue with whatever development's going to be there. There's already a traffic issue there to begin with. So maybe they'll, they'll don't like the way the new development, if there's going to be one, now nah, this is only going to increase the problem with traffic. No matter how much everybody wants the development to go in, the planning board could still say, no, you're creating a, a, a traffic nightmare. Maybe a great development, but a traffic nightmare. We don't need another traffic nightmare there. So give them the option of in reviewing each individual development if there's one presented, and let them do their job. I'm happy with the way it is. Councilor Shade. Just to clarify, my objection isn't that I don't trust the planning board. My objection is that the way this is written, it says certain 
properties and areas within that zone can have a special permit and other places can't. That's not equitable. It's, it, it would be better to separate those two items as two separate zones, allow a special permit in one zone and not allow it in another. We were basically taking away the original intent of what that was written, and it was only written a few years ago, in which the original intent was to have very specific language that this is the design of anything within that zone. Now, to uh, Mr. Moranti's point, and I do agree with him, that this is an important step in, in that that zone was made too large. It, 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 was, it expanded too far beyond its reach. It, it needs to be redrawn and not go outside of its reach. I think the rule inside of a zone should be the same for everything inside of that zone. We talk about not allowing special, um, not allow spot zoning, but this is essentially granting the planning board to spot zone a specific property based on whatever they decide. Um, it's not a, it's not legally spot zoning, but it's 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 a technicality to get around that. I'd rather just fix the zone altogether and have Main Street be its own zone, and everything else that's off of Main Street follow this, have this ability and just separate out the zones. So that way, it's equitable and fair to everything within those separate zones. Here, we're having one zone where there's a rule for one street, and everything else doesn't have to follow that rule. Um, there's, there's an opportunity for a special permit, a special relaxation of the rules, as long as it's not on Main Street. So my solution would be, I know it's more difficult, it's a longer process, but I'd rather zone it correctly. So that's, that's my objection. So, thank you. Councillor Bona. Again, without a zone, let's just say, let's just talk Main Street. And let's just say down the road, the L-shaped plaza gets torn down and someone comes forward with a plan where that building isn't, like, it's a great plan and maybe that building isn't right up to 10 feet from the sidewalk. They're going to probably apply for a special permit. And let's say the design looks absolutely awesome. We're thrilled with it. Are we going to say, oh, that needs to be a new zone now? we can make these special adjustments that is again what the planning board is there for it, it's open to the public to vet um i just think at the end you're going to have it no one's going to drive down those streets later and say oh there's the line where the zone is they're not allowed to do this and they're not allowed to do that businesses do apply uh and not just businesses but properties owners do apply for special permits a lot and um i don't think they have to be going through we need a new zone so um that's 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 it i mean we're just going to go back and forth on this so. i know we are okay. councilor shade just just one quick point great example but in this example, based on the wording of this, that L-shaped plaza wouldn't qualify for the special permit. They're not qualified. That, that's the whole point that I'm trying to make. The business on Main Street should also qualify for the special permit. If we're gonna give it to everybody in the zone, give it to everybody in the zone. Don't just exclude one straight. But they we're actually excluding the plaza because of the way this is written. That's my whole point. <laughs> I, I think we've made our case. Everybody knows how we, we feel, what we think. Um, we have a motion and a second. Anyone who hasn't spoken want to add in? We have a motion and a second. All in. F oh, I'm going to make. It. I'm going to do a roll call. What do we have for the record? Farbo. No. Bona. Yes. Aleskowitz. Yes. Sapienza. Yes. Shade. No. Wilkinson. Yes. Black Mayor. Yes. Five yeas, motion carries. <clears throat> so it's passed through second reading and published as required by law. Um, let's see, where do we go next? Council paper 12,305, an ordinance amending chapter one, general provisions, section five, recordation of ordinances referred to general government at the meeting of September 12th, 2023, with a return date of October 20. Third, Councillor, um, unless Councillor Wilkinson, do you have a motion? Did it again. We don't look alike in any event. Um, because of scheduling problems and one of our members having a tragedy in their family, this didn't get scheduled in a more timely fashion. However, we do have a general government meeting, um, and I'll bring this to the, the clerk to post tomorrow uh, on the. Tuesday the 17th at 5.15.
Okay, do you have a motion? I make postpone. a motion to postpone until, uh, let's see, the first meeting after that, because we should be able to take care of it, would be the second meeting, second meeting in uh, October. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Council paper 12,306, an ordinance to amend chapter 10, junk and secondhand dealers, article one, section 10-3, record of purchases and sales, inspection of books, shopkeeper to display name, 10-4, dealing with minors prohibited, 10-5, business hours referred to general government and finance committee at the meeting of September 12th. Do we have an update from either or a motion from either? I will just say that this, this pertains to the same as the last one. Uh, this will be on the agenda for the meeting on the 17th and uh, make a motion to postpone to the second week in our, uh, second meeting in October. Second. Discussion? Abstain. Outright. Oh, and you're chair of finance and it's been referred to finance. We'll figure it out. Okay. Sorry, we'll have to figure that part out. Um, all in <coughs> favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six yeas, one abstention. Motion carries. <coughs> Council paper 12,310, Mayor's Communication 90, seeking confirmation of the list of election wardens and inspectors for a term of September 26th through August 31st, postponed from the meeting of September 26th with a return date of October 23rd. Without objection, I'll file the communication. Um, there was a question um, regarding some of the um, workers, one of whom has rescinded their interest in Serving the other, we have a document that we can sign off on from the at their um, recommendation of the state, state mm -hmm. attorney general's office. Um, if you so want to include that person, although did you send it out with a cross off? I sent it out like that. Okay, so we're just. So it's been amended. There's been two names crossed off the list. So if we want to approve this list as, uh, wait a minute, we have to vote on it, right? Approval, no. It's a mayor's communication. So we need to confirm the appointments. So we have a motion to confirm the appointments. Second. We need a first one. Oh, okay. Motion to uh, approve the uh, appointments. Second. Discussion? Councilor Shade. Yes, can we clarify, um, I, I didn't receive a new list of names. Can we clarify who was stricken off? Um, it was John Leonazio and Joshua Valliers. Thank you. They were crossed off on the, I think when it was scanned. Oh, maybe not in the documents. Okay. It was. Yeah, no, that was the um, Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Council paper 12,314, an order granting permission for a new poll location and a replacement of a poll on Montana Street. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Councilor Shade. Yes. Um, so at the last meeting before when we uh, discussed this, there was um, a question from the public about our process, about us having the correct paperwork and documentation. Just want to state publicly, we do have in front of us the certificate of liability insurance that does cover um, what is in our city <coughs> ordinance that National Grid is required to have, and, and we have that in our documentation. It does exist, so I just want to clarify that for the record for the public so that it's known that that documentation does exist. We are voting on this legally. We do have the certificate of insurance as, as is required um, by ordinance. Thank you. I'd also like to clarify we do have a letter from um, Mr. Lascarbo approving the location. 
and approving the project. So that's also with our paperwork. Um, so we have a motion and a, did we have a motion yet? Yes. Okay. Yes. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lascarbo. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. Wait. <laughs> Who made the motion? I'm sorry. Who made the motion? I did. I, oh. I made the motion. Someone seconded it. I seconded it. Okay. Thank you. I was looking for the papers. Sorry. So you, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting unless there's something else on the agenda you want to talk about. <laughs> sorry. I was going to move it up, but when the I was hoping the gentleman would get here. Okay. We did this MOU. We did this. <coughs> Three seventeen, I believe, is next. Three sixteen. Yeah, no, I'm getting there. Okay. Council paper 12,317, Mayor's Communication 93, to present a proclamation acknowledging Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Without objection, I will follow, file your communication. And Mayor, have at it. Uh, this is a proclamation designating October 2023 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas domestic violence is defined as abusive behavior in a personal relationship that gives one member control and power over another's physical, emotional, sexual, economic, or psychological actions and threats. And whereas domestic viol violence violates an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity. And whereas one in four women and one in seven men will experience physical violence in their, with their intimate partner at some point during their lifetimes. About one in three women and one in six men experience some form of sexual violence during their lifetimes. And whereas domestic violence exhibits remarkable strength, courage, and resilience, <clears throat> but still face significant barriers in escaping abuse. And whereas domestic violence awareness is a time for family, friends, and communities to remember and honor all the victims, raise awareness to help prevent domestic violence, and to recognize and celebrate the work of advocacy that happens throughout our community. I therefore, Mayor of the City of North Adams, do hereby proclaim October 2023 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I invite all of you to join us tomorrow um, outside City Hall from 5 to 6 for a standout. Thank you. Council Paper 12,318, an order calling for the city elections for November 7th, 2023. City Clerk is hereby directed to cause her to be published and posted as provided in Section 63 of Chapter 54 of the General Laws, the following notice of election. City election, Tuesday, September 7th, 2023, City of North Adams. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter 54 of the General Laws, notice is hereby given that the meeting of the citizens of North Adams qualified to vote will be held on Tuesday, the 7th day of November 2023 in the following locations. Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, Ward 5. Four, word four, word five. St. Elizabeth's of Hungary Parish Center, 70 Marshall Street. Polls will open at nine o'clock in the afternoon and close at seven o'clock in the af I'm sorry, in the <coughs> forenoon and close at seven o'clock in the afternoon. And all voters will will in the several wards in which they are entitled to vote between set hours give their votes for mayor, North Adams City Council, North Adams School Committee, Northern Berkshire Vocational Regional School Committee. Motion to adopt would be in order. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Okay, I have a question, and this comes up every time, and I keep saying I'm going to put it in the ordinance. Um, we don't have to be open. We only have to be open from, from 9 to 7, but every time I hear people, if I'm out there, I hear people complaining they want to vote before they go to work, and then they get busy and they don't come back. And I, I really feel like we should open the polls earlier. So we have the option to change that. I know um, it'll take some refiguring of the schedule with the clerk's office, but I don't know where any how anyone else feels. And I'm Councillor Oleskowitz, Councillor Wilkinson. I'll agree with Councillor Blackmer. I believe up until last year, the polling times were 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. It 
No. Weren't they? They, no. they gave people that worked the opportunity to vote. And in, in the last elections, I recall talking to so many people that didn't vote because the, the time frame had changed. The problem is that people confuse the state and federal elections with the municipal elections, which is another reason I think it should be consistent starting time particularly. The state and federal elections have to be from, they have to be 13 hours. Ours have always run 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I don't care about the, I think the other hour, the hour on the end is less of an issue than the hours in the morning, um, particularly since a lot of our, our residents work out of town and then have family commitments in the afternoon. It's, um, I know we, we've, we've jumped this around. We have, we've had it at seven, we've had it at eight, and we've had it at nine. And it's someday we'll get around to actually putting it in ordinance, but until then we, we set it every election. And the last election I looked it up was actually nine o'clock in the morning. But I do know that I hear, I hear complaints about it. I don't know about anybody else. Do we have the uh, authority? To change that time? Yes. I move that we change the starting time to vote to 8 o'clock. We need to amend the order. I move no. to amend the order to 8 o'clock. I would like to amend the order to have the beginning time for voting start at 8 o'clock. Do we have a second? Just a question of clarification. Yep. In the beginning, I thought we were speaking of starting at 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I just said throw I threw it out there yes. for anybody to think about so, I mean 7 p 7 a.m. does give a better window of people I will be glad to amend it to 7 a.m. do we have a second I'll second that do we have discussion on the amendment Councillor Bona yeah so I think while we're making this sound easy um, you know we do have the, the city clerk here um, and obviously this puts more on, on her workload as in making sure we have uh, the workers, the police officers, everything there um, that can be easily changed. Um, I do think when this discussion has come up in the past, I could be wrong because we're bringing it up now, but when they have looked at past numbers, those first couple hours have not been anything of sub, you know, a substantial number. And we could say just 10 votes, 20 votes, what's the number that says it's worth it? Um, I also think with more options now of being able to do voting beyond the voting day gives people the option. You can go into the city clerk's office and vote. How many, when's that start? It starts on the 23rd for early voting. Uh, and what time can they vote, come in in the morning and they vote? They can come in on, during regular hours every day um, every day and we're going to be open on two Saturdays right and so that's the other thing is so we're, we're now offering a lot more voting options than we did a few years ago I mean you're never gonna make everyone happy you do it at seven someone's gonna say I go to work at six you know and uh, um, so I, I just feel like this discussion came up once before and there weren't that many and for whatever the cost difference was it just didn't seem like it was um, substantial enough, but I, I think we're making a decision without really looking at all the all the data in front of us. That's just my opinion. I, I would say it's hard to get data on municipal elections between seven and nine if we don't do it very often. If we're inconsistent, I think it makes sense. My re my reason for doing it, it, suggesting it is, it's consistent. You know, you can always vote at seven o'clock in the morning, and if that's what it always is, then it's people don't get confused. Councilor Shade. Yes, um, through the chair to the clerk, uh, the early voting, um, you gave us a start date. When does that end? Does it go all the way through election day or does it, it end a few days before? It goes until the day before. The day before. Yeah. day before? So anybody? The day before. Or is that absentee goes the day before? Early and absentee is the day before. Okay. goes right up and through to the day before. We're also doing mail-in voting. Um, we got a bunch of them in today. And two um, Saturdays. And two Saturdays. Thank you. Do, so do we, have, we an, have an idea of what the cost difference might be? I can't hear you. Do we have an idea of what the cost difference might be? Because it would be two more hours, it's right, for be police two officers. Two more hours for, times for, 15 people per uh, times. Uh, that's Probably the police officers are going to be one of the bigger. 
Huh? Us. Yeah, they're like 50 I don't know bucks what an the hour. Police officers are right. How us. many do we have on now at a time? How many officers? Four, Four five. Four. So that's two hundred dollars. Five. Yeah, I'm sorry, two hundred. It's four hundred. Five. And I believe the at fifty an hour, thirty an hour. Like what are they getting? Something for um. Thirteen something or fourteen something per election worker last year. Yeah, I think like, I remember this discussion coming up. I mean, it's probably fifteen hundred to. I think it. I think it's like yeah, it's about twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Including the police officers. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just have a question for a seven o'clock start time. What time does that mean our workers have to? I can't hear you. For a seven o'clock start time, what time does our do our workers have to arrive? Um, well, because don't last they usually have to worked, arrive we were, earlier? For the workers for the election or yes. the workers for everybody else? The workers for the election. For the election, um, usually they have to come in a half hour before. <coughs> um, the police with the last election met Josh and I at 530 um, for us to have everything brought over and the maintenance. So there's that end too, with bringing everything over. So if we start at seven, then the city yard needs to meet. If we start at seven, then the city yard needs to come in earlier. And that's what we do for federal elections? Yeah. Federal and state. So we have an amendment and we have a second. All Councilor Bona. Yeah, I, again, I just remember this discussion coming up before, and I think I'm not going to uh, support it at this time just without knowing. I think, like, one thing I would like to know is even with the, <coughs> when we have the, the federal elections, just to know how many voted the first hour or two, just, you know, without knowing that. And I just think more and more people are voting other options now besides actually going to the ballot. So if they really can't make it and they really want to get there, there's many ways they can they can still vote. So. Councilor Sapienza. Yeah, I would not support a uh, change in the time, primarily because of the extra cost and added workload to our city people and our ward election wardens, our police department. I think the extra cost, if we do not, uh, coinciding with what Councilor Bona says, if we don't have enough votes during that period of time, uh, we do have the extended time, 7 p.m. on the other end. Um, I think we should just leave it where it is thank you I would also remember when you say they can vote at City Hall well they can vote at City Hall at what time does City Hall open eight eight o'clock well there's a difference between seven and eight I'm just putting that out there Councillor Wilkinson you'll get it it's my constitutional right to vote if I the only time I can vote is at 710 I should be uh, awarded the right to be able to vote at 710. Yeah, it may cost a little bit more money. Yeah, we're going to need a couple more people to do it. But it's my right, to con a constitutional right to vote. And I may want to do it at 710. But you're going to deny me my constitutional right to vote because you don't want me there until 9 o'clock. Well, you're breaking my constitutional rights. Councilor Shady. If the only time to vote were between the time scheduled, I would completely agree with that statement. But because there is early voting, absentee voting, and mail-in voting, that time frame is almost not relevant in the discussion. If you can't get to the poll at 710 and the poll doesn't open until 9, you can mail-in vote. You can come down to City Hall any time in the week before and vote, including on Saturdays. So there's, there's plenty of opportunity for everyone to have the opportunity to vote. And we do want as much opportunity as possible while also balancing our budget and making sure that we aren't charging the taxpayers more for people not even utilizing a specific service. Um, so it, with that, because of all the other options that are available, I, I would say I'm opposed to changing the time. Councillor Leskowitz. Yes, there are other options available, but we know in North Adams we have a large voter base that is elderly, and they have 
traditionally voted early in or in the morning. Regardless of the extra cost incurred, I still stand strongly behind an earlier voting time because regardless if there's one vote or 500 votes, every vote does matter, and that's what we try to instill in everybody's minds. Thank you. Anyone else? There's a, okay, so we need to vote on the amendment that Councillor Wilkinson made. And obviously, it's gonna be hard to keep track of, so roll call on the amendment. Okay. Uh, the amendment, for clar clarification, this amendment was me changing from? Nine to eight, seven. No, seven my eight. eight to seven. But we actually didn't get a second on your I never got a second. We, we were having a discussion about going to 7 a.m. It's going to seven. Okay, just one clarification, that's yep. all, thank you. We never got a second and then it went, okay. So what are we? What, we're voting at seven o'clock. We're voting on 7 o'clock. Point of order. Does Councillor Wilkinson have to resend the 8 o'clock start? No. Did he, no, he because he, he never got a second okay, and then he changed right. it to 7. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. Barbo? Yes. Fona? No. Aleskowitz? Yes. Sapienza? Uh, yes. Shade? No. Wilkinson? Yes. Blackmare? Yes. Is that five yeses? Five yeses. Five yes and motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Okay, let's move on. Approval of a taxi license, an application submitted by Oblio. Point of order. I'm sorry. We voted on the amendment. We still have to vote on oh, you're right. the order. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, and we have an amendment that has been passed. So we're voting on the order as amended. Okay, so hold on a second. Sorry. We, I thought we already voted. No, we voted on the amendment. We're voting on it as amended. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Barbo? Yes. Black Mirror. Oh, sorry. Barbo? Yes. Bona? Yes. Alaskowitz? Yes. Sapienza? Yes. Shade? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Black Mirror? Yes. I'll agree. Seven yeas, motion carries. <laughs> Question? We did a lot of voting, a lot of amending back and forth, just for clarity for anybody that. So polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. No, I'm sorry, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. What if you want to vote at 8? You're I right. Thought, I thought we were going 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes you have to make a compromise. Okay. Approval of taxi license. An application submitted by Olio Rodriguez the third to be granted a license to drive a taxi for... RJ's taxi. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, approval <coughs> of secondhand dealer shop. An application be submit, has been submitted by Marianne George for Mary Antiques and Gifts secondhand shop located at 615 Ashland Street for the remainder of the time. $50 November 23 to March 2024. Motion to approve would be in order. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. You abstaining? Abstain. Councilor Bone is abstaining. Motion carries. Approval of secondhand dealer shop and application has been submitted by Jessica Sweeney for Savvy Hive secondhand shop located 53 Main Street for the cost for a full year, 150 April 2023 to March 2024. Motion to approve would be in order. Motion to approve. Second. Councilor Sepienza, Councilor Shade. All in favor? Aye. 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 Staying. Opposed? No. Um, six yeas and Councilor Bone abstained. Open forum. This is an opportunity for the public to speak to the council for two minutes on issues of municipal significance. Name and address for the record, please. <coughs> uh, Robert Cardamino, 173 Squinzy Street. It's it's uh, 
it's been uh, agreed to a long time ago that when uh, National Grid want to locate a pole, that they would send a representatives before the council in case there was any question. And now all of a sudden, there's no one up appearing here to represent uh, National Grid. Now I know they, they're, they're uh, finally uh, agreeing to the uh, amendments, you know, and, and the, the uh, bond and everything else, and, and, but they still supposed to uh, have a representative here. And that was happened many moons ago, and I'm the guy that brought it up a long, long time ago. Nobody's here. And uh, I would like to say one more thing. We can always count on the council to do the right thing after they have uh, exhausted everything else. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the council? <laughs> and since I have a short memory, name and address for the record yes, again. Yes, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Virginia Real, 36 Holden Street again. And I just uh, forgot to mention that I agree with the comment that I read in the taxi ordinance about needing to update the insurance levels. I think that's really important. And I don't, you know, so that would be just to add to my comments. And also, I would be glad to come to a committee if I can come. And, you know, um, also, Council Member Sapienza, I'll reach out to you directly and happy to talk to you too. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Andrew Fitch, 20 East Quincy Street. I just want to commend you folks for voting to extend the voting hours. Um, I think it's really important. I, I know a lot of us think it's really important to provide as much access as possible for people to vote. Um, those extra two hours could make a huge difference. And I fully recognize, too, that voting is getting easier and that we have more ways to vote. However, I don't think I'm the only person who's ever procrastinated in this room and forgot to go and take out papers earlier, you know, to get the, the mail-in ballot earlier. So thank you for doing that. Um, I think it was the right thing. Cheers. Anyone else? Mayor's update. Hmm? I'm good for tonight. You're good for tonight. Committee reports in minutes. Liaison updates and no. count. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Councilor Sapienza. Uh, yes, uh, to answer the question on the. Uh, I'm sorry, I. Blink okay. Blinking on your name again. It's, it's all right. It's Virginia. It's Virginia. Right. Okay. Thank you. Virginia, we don't like the dance. Okay. Thank you. Um, public uh, public safety meetings are open meetings, and whenever it's posted, you are welcome to come as well as any member of the public. That is a public open meeting, and uh, you are invited, or anybody that wishes to uh, attend is invited to that meeting. It's not always possible, for example, I'm traveling next week, just to say. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, the committee's in minutes. Liaison updates counselor's concerns. Counselor Shade. Yes, um, not so much concern, but I just want to thank uh, the team of people who uh, did the street um, art on Eagle Street. Uh, it's very beautiful to see. It's great to finally see some artwork down there on the street. So I just want to thank the, the group that uh, put that together um, and also update everyone that the uh, IDEA Commission's next meeting will be on Wednesday, uh, October 11th, here in the chamber. Um, thank you. Anyone else? We don't have any correspondence. A motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs>